tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. All about nutrition from your favorite dietitian. Everything you need to digest in your mind. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Making you healthier one bite at a time. With Tony. With Tony. With Tony. Welcome to the Tips with Tony podcast. I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. This topic is something that comes up very often when I work with my clients one on one, and it's all about how to prevent the weekend binge. I think we have this history. Um, I think maybe it's diet culture or restriction, or the fact that you know Monday through Friday our schedules tend to be really structured and routine, so it's a little bit easier to not have even the time to overeat. Um, but then on the weekend, it's a little bit more freeing. Um, we don't have a usual routine. Maybe we wake up later. Maybe we don't have to be anywhere and, or maybe we're around or maybe we do have to be somewhere and it's like a social situation. And because we maybe didn't have those foods during the week, we kind of find the weekends to be like really hard to, um, kind of control ourselves and it tends to be kind of like a free for all. So I wanted to give you five tips on how to, prevent the weekend binge because one thing that I find is that if think about it if you are quote unquote really good let's not even say or let's go backwards right so say on Friday it's really difficult for you and I I definitely was this person on Friday Friday nights were really tough for me because I worked multiple jobs I was a very hard worker I always played sports I was always really super active and even as I got older even as a dietitian guys Fridays were the absolute hardest for me um it was when I was exhausted from a full week it's like I didn't want to go out um so I would stay home but the you know the cabinets right there and then what do we do we we're we're relaxing we're watching tv and then we're just going back and forth back and forth we're not even hungry we're still eating because we're trying to feel fuel something so it's similar to emotional eating but it's not i will to another episode about emotional eating and how to overcome that this is really just the fact that like you're a human being (laughs) you're you work really hard you come home on a friday you're exhausted and now you overeat so now you overeat you wake up the next day you're really upset about it And because you don't have your usual routine, maybe you sleep in a little bit later, you skip breakfast, then you go out to eat. You don't really eat much during the day and you go out at night and then you're like, oh, I didn't really eat much today. And then you overeat on kind of all the wrong things. Your cravings come up, then you overdo it. Then you wake up on Sunday. Maybe you have a party, a family event or something. You're around people who don't have the same, you know, don't have the same goals as you. And you're just like, you know what? I'm going to start on Monday. But we all know that a couple of days of not feeling so great. Monday isn't like we're not gung-ho. We're still kind of like, Mondays are crazy between work and school and whatever we have to do. And then by the time we actually get going, you're really not, you're really only making healthy choices like Tuesday through Thursday. And if you really truly want to see progress and you want to see results, you're going to have to be consistent. You're going to have to have more good days or healthy balanced days than less healthy and balanced days if you truly want to see results. So if we really took a look at all of your days and everything, you know, you can't expect to get on the scale and lose weight or to see progress or to get like feel awesome after your workout if you really aren't eating well most days. Okay. So that's number one. So that's just like a point I wanted to make. Now, The way to prevent that Friday night binge that leads to a Saturday, that leads to a Sunday, is being able to really be honest with yourself during the week. So maybe you're not eating enough during the week, or maybe you're too restrictive in the sense that you're not allowing for yourself to have anything that's sweet or savory, and you're like saving it for the weekend. That's not a good idea, because what ends up happening is we end up overdoing it. So if in your week weekday you had three meals per week three meals but they were very well balanced when you were craving maybe something sweet you allowed yourself to have maybe a small piece of chocolate or maybe you allowed yourself to have like you know like a small serving of french fries in the middle of the week chances are on friday and saturday and sunday you wouldn't feel the need to now have all of the french fries and all of the cheeseburgers and all of the ice cream and all of the sweets and you you wouldn't do that because you allowed yourself to have it in addition to having lots of vegetables lean proteins um you know fruits nuts and seeds a regular balanced diet so if you work on balance every single day your weekend really shouldn't feel that much different 
Now, the scheduling part is going to be, and the fact that you worked Monday through Friday, chances are you're probably really tired, which leads me to number two. So the second thing that you really need to do is you really need to manage your energy because at the end of the week, we're very tired. We've made thousands of choices all week long, and now we have to make more choices, and we don't have the energy to do that. And so that's where it's really easy to just have that extra serving and have that extra helping or being around people. And like if the chips and the dipper in front of you, you could easily have more before you realize, like, why did I just do that? Right. So you have to have to have to manage your energy. So in this situation, being able to know what that is for you that you need is really helpful. Helpful. So I'll give you an example. For some of you, that might actually mean on Friday, instead of going out, you do stay in and you actually get to sleep earlier and you kind of just let yourself recoup from the week and you let yourself sleep in a little bit later on Saturday and maybe that's what you need. Okay. Whereas for me, when I would struggle with Friday night binging or eating, I would, for me to stay home on a Friday wasn't a good idea. Because for me, it meant I would be raiding the cabinets. So knowing that, although I was working and I was really tired, I allowed myself to kind of relax a little bit, watch some TV, but I always made a point to have plans with someone where I would go actually go out to eat. Okay, so that way I wasn't tempted. And I actually for me, I chose to hang out with people that gave me energy. So that's a really important thing, guys. If you choose to surround your people, surround yourself with people that make you laugh, that you enjoy spending time with, you're actually going to feel like you you don't even need sleep sometimes in those moments. Right. If you're going on, if you're in a relationship with someone that you love and they make you happy and you go on a date with them, you're going to feel really good after. But if you go out with someone that you don't really like, you don't really enjoy, and then, you know, maybe they're negative, or maybe they're just, like, not your person, and you don't vibe well with them, well, they're just going to make your situation worse, and they're going to pull from your energy, and then, therefore, you, when it comes to making choices for yourself, are going to be really difficult to do, okay? So, that's a really important thing, to know who you are, and to know that sometimes we need a night out with friends, and go out dancing, and that's a fun way, and yet we're expending energy, but really, we're actually, that's, like, filling us up, like, for me, that, that's something that I enjoy. That's something that I love. And it's better than me sitting on the couch and overeating, right? But for some of you, maybe you need that maybe like on a Saturday. But Friday, you're so done for. You just need to go to sleep. Because if you're sleeping, then you won't be raiding the cabinets, okay? So number three is now that you allowed yourself to maybe sleep in a little bit later on Saturday or maybe you went to bed earlier on Friday and you got a good night's sleep, you must, must, must get some movement in on the weekend. It doesn't necessarily have to be a crazy workout. It doesn't necessarily have to be anywhere, but I think it would be really great to have some sort of a thing that you intentionally do first thing in the morning, whether it's go for a walk, get your workout in, um, go to don't go take a class, whatever it is. I think doing some movement on the weekend is really, really helpful for you because most of the time, and once again, this is all about knowing who you are. Most of the time, doing some kind of movement really helps to one stimulate our appetite, which most people tend to skip breakfast on a weekend. And then they have, they don't have like enough lunch and then they overeat, right? So it'll get your metabolism moving. Chances are you'll probably want to eat something. It'll just change your mood, your energy, your mindset. It'll make you feel more focused when going into these places. Um, and, you know, also too, it's just going to kind of give you some sort of structure, which we tend to lack Monday through, when we tend to lack on the weekends, where Monday through Friday might be extra structured, give you a little bit of some sort of a routine that can kind of put something to you know give you I guess um some sort of guideline of like what else can I get done today like what kind of how do I want to be productive today um but putting something in there that's actually going to kind of start that for you right right so like if we're overdoing it on Monday through Friday and then on Saturday and Sunday we feel like there's nothing really getting us going whole day can go by and we're just like well what did I really do today okay <laughs> so um so part of that is so the movement is really really important now the fourth thing I need you to do is to make sure that you actively try to eat three meals per day like three meals per day including the weekend so what very often happens is our breakfast our lunch our dinner everything 
gets pushed back. But what ends up happening is people tend to skip meals. Maybe we're running errands, we're grocery shopping, um, we're at the you know we're at the stores, you know we're driving our kids to uh, practice or whatever it is, and we let the day go away and we tend to skip meals or the morning because you're like oh well I'm gonna have lunch at like you know, 12, one o'clock and I slept till 10, you're like, oh, I just won't eat. But if you had breakfast at 10, that's 11, 12, one, that's three hours. Every two to three hours, it's important to check in and just ask yourself, am I hungry? When am I going to eat next? Maybe I'll have a little bit of something. So if you feel like your meals are kind of more squished together, then just decrease your portions, right? But definitely don't skip meals. So if you have to push back your breakfast, then your lunch gets pushed back a little bit and then your dinner gets pushed back a little bit because most of the time on the weekends, you know, I know Monday through Friday, um, so it's hard really, my schedule is very different, but most of the time I'm usually done eating dinner like on the earlier side, but on like a Friday or Saturday, I might not go out to dinner until like eight o'clock at night. So in that situation, then maybe having breakfast a little bit later is helpful, but I'm not going to skip breakfast and I'm not going to skip lunch because we all know when we skip meals, we end up overeating, right? It's really, really difficult to um, maintain what we intended that we wanted to eat when we're start not, not eating all day, right? When we're, we're decreasing our calorie intake, then we overdo it and we overcompensate as a result, okay? Um, and then the very last thing that I really need you to do is to review what you have going on, maybe even in the beginning of the week, if you know, say that on Friday or Saturday, is a, um, you know, you're going out for someone's birthday or something like that, that might make you, your old mentality might be super restrictive Monday through Friday, which is only going to make it worse. But in that situation, I think it's helpful to know, to just know what you have going on. So that way you can plan accordingly, right? So if you know, you're going to this Mexican restaurant for your friend's birthday, look up the menu beforehand, go in with some kind of a game plan and try your absolute best to really, truly stick to it. Obviously making it realistic, right? So it's being able to make choices and this is a little bit more so about like you know um just general like knowing how to navigate social situations and knowing how to navigate the menus and stuff like that but you know the weekend doesn't mean you have to be and and every day really you don't have to be perfect right so if you go you're going to this Mexican restaurant and maybe your favorite thing is chips and guac then allow yourself to have chips and guac but if you're also going to have the sangria and you're also going to have um you know like um maybe like an enchilada with the rice and beans, right? So like, that's a little bit excessive in that moment. You're not going to be able to, it's going to be really difficult to continue to reach your health and wellness goals. And possibly if you're on a weight loss plan, your weight loss goals, if it in one meal, you're having chips and guac, um, you know, a, a sweetened beverage, um, rice and beans with cheese and and tortilla and you know like it's just it's going to be really hard not only is it going to be hard to you to get your goal get to your goal but you're not going to feel good the next day you're not going to feel good afterwards right so with being able to kind of know where you're going and that'll help you to create some sort of a game plan it'll also help you to know what to eat during the day so you if you know for example um on saturday you're going for pizza and pizza is like carb rich carb heavy you know especially if it's just cheese pizza you're not going to you know, unless you intentionally add some vegetables or like have some protein, like a, like an animal based protein or even a plant based protein, like cheese has protein, but it's like mostly fat and oil. So it's not really going to be the most balanced meal. Now we know that pizza can be included. I'm Italian. I'm never telling you not to eat pizza, but if you're going to go to pizza later that night and you know that then the rest of your day should be, we want to balance it. We want to have lean proteins. We want to have lots of vegetables. We want to make sure that we're snacking on things like fruit and nuts and stuff like that. And then maybe for lunch, if you normally would have had a salad and me, I mean, if for lunch, you normally would have had a sandwich and maybe breakfast, you, you normally would have had say oatmeal. Those are great, healthy choices, right? Whole grain bread, oatmeal, but all of that bread. Plus, if you wanted to have like two to three slices of pizza, we really need to take a look at like, maybe that's not the best idea. Maybe for lunch, you just have a salad and you maybe hold off on some of the extra starches that you maybe normally would have had with it, maybe like a sandwich as well. So I hope that's not making sense. So it's all being able to really plan ahead to balance it out so you can feel really confident going into these situations and making really good choices, okay? And then this is just like a bonus last last tip. Um, If you do binge on the weekend, you need to wipe your hands of it and you need to plan for a 
better balanced Monday, a better balanced Tuesday, better balanced Wednesday, and a better balanced every single day instead of thinking, okay, I'm going to just go on Monday. I'm just going to eat really little. I'm going to restrict myself because that's only going to add to the cycle and you will spend your entire life never making progress. Okay. So you need to break the cycle. And the only way to do that is to eat balance during the week, manage your energy, get more movement in, try to have three meals per day and review your menus or your plans before the weekend comes. And if they change, review them again. Always be committed to the plan, but flexible in the approach. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook at tips underscore with underscore Tony. You can email me tipswithtony at gmail.com. If you're not or if you're not already subscribed to the Tips with Tony podcast, please subscribe. It allows other people to find the podcast, but more importantly, it notifies you every Monday and every Wednesday when a new episode comes out. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, then you're probably going to enjoy my Healthy Living's Foundations course. Module four is all about how to navigate social situations. We talk about how to prevent the weekend binge in addition to other things like macronutrients, um, physical activity, setting boundaries for those that you love. Um, there's, there's a module about meal prep and mindset and overcoming and managing emotional eating. It's an incredible course. Um, if you have not already go check on ch- and to check it out, go check it out. www.tipswithtony.com slash courses. If you have any questions, just message me. All right, guys, you've been an absolute pleasure. I'll talk to you next week. As always, I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time.